Jesus. Seguyo indela e lisuelo bombi e caia na bantu passei quem leva ao segulo eu lisuela e lisuelo lobo mi e ca Ganeba, o siguyo, o siguyo intenta, y el suelo conmigo, y calla, y calla la batu, pasele, pasele ganeba.
my God. We're here to celebrate the life of a great man. Hallelujah. Oh, 
You may be seated. Thank you so much. I acknowledge in our presence today His Majesty, King Leruo of the Royal Bafokeng. I acknowledge members of the business community. I have seen some of them. I apologize if I don't call all of you. I've seen Sizwe Nassan, I've seen Dr. Judy Glamine, uh, I've seen Herman Mashaba, I've seen former premiers of Gauteng, Tokyo Sekwale, and Ms. Nombula Makunyani. I've seen Gabi Mahomola. And but I acknowledge every single one of you who've come today to pay respect to this man. We are gathered here today to remember the little things that made this man special and to have a place in our heart. To remember those happy times when we laughed and those times when our hearts broke as one. For who could put a price on memories? We gather to share the pain to hurt when you hurt, without presuming that our pain is the same. To cry when you cry, and not to try to hide and to avoid our, our tears. For tears are memories in motion. We gather to give the gift of grief. To stand beside you in silence, and not to be uncomfortable with your tears. To allow you the gift of mourning, this loss, and not to lose patience. For gift, for grief is nature's way of healing a broken heart. My name is Tebe Ikalafeng. We are here with you to remember and celebrate the life of Dr. Richard Maponya, to celebrate a life well lived. We are here to comfort and to commiserate with the children, the 10 children, the 25 grandchildren, the 19 grandchildren, great grandchildren, and the many who will not have had the opportunity to know this great life. We are here to comfort the Mapunya family. We are here for them as they face this unimaginable journey of grief. We are gathered here to honor a life that was lived well among us. Your presence here today helps the family to realize how valuable Papa was to others and shows what impact his life has had and the magnitude of the loss to all of us. We are here to honor a man who has touched many lives. We will stop to hear some of the stories today, to laugh, to cry together once again, and to acknowledge that we are different because Richard, because Richard lived. You know, as uh, saw on the gravestone from the Republic of Ireland, death leaves a heartache no one can heal, but love leaves a memory no one can heal. We are here because we loved Richard. We're here because we love his family. Ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, all, all protocol observed. I'd like to start the program by just getting rid of some of the administrative stuff. So everybody's got a program for today. We'll follow the program. We're trying to follow the program very tightly. For those who want bathrooms, there are, there are signs outside as you leave. When you leave this place today, I would love you to record on either side as you exit your thoughts on the condolences books that we have put together for our daily departed. There are ushers who are wearing black and white, should you have any other questions. Before we go any further, it is right and appropriate that we open this with a prayer. Richard was a man of faith. The day before he passed on, as some of you would have known, he called his whole family together. He called his great-grandchildren. It was no big occasion. He wasn't saying, it wasn't supposed to do anything. It was just what he used to do, to call all of them together and says, let us celebrate together. Let us have lunch together as a family. And remember what matters to me is to serve the community. Among those that were invited were the Reverend Mangani and his wife. As the music plays, I will ask Reverend Mangani to make his way to open this with a prayer. <laughs> Yeah. 
When we are gathered in this fashion, the only first thing that I can say is let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let the church say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. A painful day, a difficult day, but it is still the day that the Lord has made. And therefore we need to rejoice and be glad in it because we have come to celebrate. Uh, and that day today is not the he, ne? it's the she. Uh, to the observed protocol and to Banabanda de Maponya, whom we love very dearly. To everybody gathered in the name of the Lord, I greet you in the powerful, healing, never-changing name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Uh, the church where I come from, it is not right. Muruti at ilungore habamulukisa. Esnirechni. So, batlantus, linda te muruti, banlukis. Dipilu dirobe hile mimoya idupe hile impa Jehovah ritsepile ritsepile uena. Tiputo dinigata impari karabo dinyani impache ho va ritse pile ritse pile wena kamato. Yeah. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. Lord, you have been our help in ages past. Still today, you are our hope for years to come. We praise you, we bless you, we glorify your holy name because you are worthy to be praised. Indeed, on this day we come not only as a family, not only as a community, but we come as a nation. And we say thank you, O oh God. We thank you for a life well lived. We thank you that on the day he was born, when there were cries in the family, you knew that there would be joy in our country. We thank you that from the day he was born, you breathed life into him. So that wherever he goes, he must breathe life into every situation. We thank you for the life of Dr. Richard Maponya. For those who knew him, each one cannot stop saying we have been blessed to have walked where he walked. We thank you, O oh God, that at a time when there seemed to be no answer, he stood in the gap for black economy. He stood in the gap not only for himself and his family, but he wanted to uplift everyone that he came into contact with. And therefore we say today, give us more like him. So that we should not only look after our own needs, but we should be able to open our eyes to the needs of others. Come down, Holy Spirit, come down. We come and we say as a country, our country is bleeding. Women and children are suffering at the hands of those who are supposed to protect them. Our country is bleeding. Politicians need your touch once again. Our country is bleeding. For no more do we have the principle of Ubuntu. Come down, Holy Spirit, come down. Bring back the spirit that we need to get ourselves up from the mighty clay so that you can plant our feet on the king's highway. Bless us one by one so that we too can stand in the gap for one another. So that we too, when our names are called, somebody will say it was good for us to have known them. We thank you for his life. Hobaning never wasted. Every opportunity given, he utilized. Give us that spirit, O oh God, to see opportunity where others don't. Give us that spirit, O oh God, to walk in those corners where others won't. Give us that spirit of wisdom to know that we have a purpose on this earth. We pray for his children. We pray for his grandchildren and his great-grandchildren. That you will be a God closer to them than you have ever been before. 99 years is a lifetime. And now that Papa is no more, remind them that the absence of man does not mean the absence of God. Remind them that the foundations that their parents set for themselves, they need to stand firm and know on Christ the solid rock they stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Just like Papa was able to call Baruti on the first Sunday of a new year, Abitza, his whole family to say, we cannot enter this year if God does not enter with us. 
ba go potse modimo gore ke wena mang so that when this time passes they will be able to declare even through that the lord has carried us bless the program of god speak healing speak comfort speak restoration in jesus name we pray amen when peace like a river and of my way when so scripture is recorded in the Old Testament, the book of Esther, chapter 4. I'm going to read verses 1 through 5 and 12 through 17. Esther chapter 4, 1 through 5, 12 through 17. And they read as follows. When Mordecai learned of all that had been done, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes, and went out into the city, wailing loudly and bitterly. But he went only as far as the king's gate, because no one clothed in sackcloth was allowed to enter it. In every province to which the edict and order of the king came, there was great mourning among the Jews, with fasting, weeping, and wailing. Many lay in sackcloth and ashes. When Esther's eunuchs and female attendants came and told her about Mordecai, she was in great distress. She sent clothes for him to put on instead of his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Then Esther summoned Hathak, one of the king's eunuchs assigned to attend her, and ordered him to find out what was troubling Mordecai and why. From verse 12, when Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this the word of the Lord to the people of the Lord. Let the church say, amen. I'm going to ask you a few favors. Um, Ali Mayindine, I'm requesting that if I say something that makes sense, 
and you agree that you can take it home with you. Don't be afraid to say amen. Don't be afraid to say hallelujah. If you must jump, you can jump a little bit. In the event that I say something that does not make sense, that really you feel I have lost my way, say, Lord, help her. Is a fair request. Amen. I think most of us know the story and the background of Esther. And what I've realized that is most of us focus mostly on Esther and what she did for the Jewish nation at the time. But today my focus wants to be really on Mordecai. Mordecai was her cousin and he adopted her because she had no parents. And so Mordecai raised her. And at a time when the king needed a new queen, he then placed her in a position to also be considered for a time as that. And what I love about the story is that the word of God says he kept sitting at the gate of the king because he was concerned over Esther's well-being. Now I want to speak today about somebody needs to be a Mordecai. If, if you look at the story that he says to her, when you get into the palace, do not tell them where you come from. Do not reveal your heritage. Just go along with the program. And so the king's eyes fell on Esther, as you know. And he really favored her. And for 12 months, she was treated, beautified. I guess on Okarona Basadi. She was beautified for 12 months just to be prepared to go into the presence of the king. And when she went into the king's presence because the Lord had already prepared the way, when she stepped in, the word of God says he only had eyes for her. Because you see, when God prepares the way, and God places you in a position that you can make a difference. They won't have a choice but to only have eyes. This reminds me of this man called Richard Maponia. Uh, my husband and I met him 2002 when we were the pastors at the Amy Church in Orlando West. And our first contact with him was because in that day said to him Maponya, I would really like to honor your wife. She has done a lot for the church. I think it is only right. It is important when somebody has made a difference in your life. Uskalibal. And this really pleased in that Maponya to the point when he says, Can it in that Murutu Kudu Kudu in Twain? Maragrina Blessed Pedisa High, Sampa Lanya, Nanako. And so he then called all his people to come and fix up the church. Ari, Habatubata, how? Your house must be in order. And so we called all the people to come and just refurbish the church and refurbish the house at the church. Sometimes it is important the way you present yourself. This man, at a time when nobody thought of it, decided that we too have a right to be empowered economically. At a time when it is, was not favorable, he understood that we all were made in the image of God. And so we too deserve the abundance that God has in store for us. So he stood in the gap. 
if we could give everybody a chance, somebody will say he was my Mordecai. He stood at the king's gate. He put his ear to the ground and he listened to what was happening during the time. And whenever he came up with a plan, it worked because he made sure that he was at the gate. Sometimes we miss out on our opportunities. Hobaning, we are very far from the gate. Sometimes we miss out on our opportunities. Hobaning, we don't have our ear to the ground. Sometimes we are so heavenly bound that we are no earthly good and we can sing God's praises in church, but yet the woman next door is being abused by her husband and we say or do. Somebody must be a Mordecai. The first story, Alibala, the book of Esther, you will see that throughout the book, he kept on staying at the king's gate. The first thing that counted in his favor when he stayed at the king's gate was when she just became queen. And so the word of God says he was at the gate to look after her well-being. I don't know was it because he did not trust them enough to do what he did. I don't know his motives for being at the gate, but he was at the right place at the right time. Hobaning, two of the king's men at the time that he was at the gate were conspiring to kill the king. And so he was there at a time when the king needed somebody to be there. He was not appointed in any position. He did not wait to be called. He was just at the gate to stand in the gap for his cousin. And when he heard them conspiring, he informed the king's men that these people want to kill the king. And when they investigated, they found out Kinit. And this is then how he saved the king's life. So when you stay at the gate, you might just save somebody's life. When you are in a position where nobody even asked you to be there, but you are just inclined by the Spirit of God to be at a certain place at a certain time, you might just bring restoration to the life of somebody else. When you are there at a time when nobody wants to be. What I love about the story is that Half better to save the king's life, but he write it down. Write it down so that it can be recorded. They have lost their way because we have not written down what they need to know. We have not informed them where we are from and what we have been through. And so the message today is write it down so that your children and your children's children will remember you did not get it on a platter. Write it down so that they will appreciate what they have now. Write it down so that they will tell the story. It was not easy, but it was worth Somebody needs to be a modica. This thing is confining me. Yellow mind, Nina.
Bara akiri langkutu. The crux of the story is a time comes when the man who is at the right hand of the king has a problem with the Jews. Hubani Mordecai refused to bow down to human beings. He refused to acknowledge people who were not supposed to be elevated to the place that they were elevated. So he refused to bow down to Haman. And Haman then had a problem and he says to the king, there are these people in our land. They refuse to bow down to any human being. We need to get rid of them. An edict was then signed and it was sent out to all the provinces that in so many days the Jews will be destroyed. And what happens is Mordecai finds out about this edict. This is where the scripture comes in. He turns to the gate in sackcloth and ash. Hubaning is mourning for his people. And because Esther has been placed in a position of power, in a position of authority, he then turns to her to make a difference. Somebody must be a Mordecai. South Africa is bleeding. Hey, the day when Zosibini became Miss Universe, the same week, Kikari Uta Lotz, stage six. The same week that the, 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 the Springboks won the World Cup. So on the biggest scale of things, the people see a beautiful picture. But at home, things are not in order. And this was the same case for the Jews. Esther was in a beautiful position, but her people were going to be destroyed. It is not possible just because you are comfortable that you forget there are those who have no running water. It is not possible that just because you have been elevated that you forget there are those who have not a home to call their own. Somebody must be a Mordecai. Richard Maponya, he said it, and I quote him when he turned 82 years old, that the Lord has blessed me so that I can put food on my table, but I want the same for somebody else. It is not possible that you can put food on your own table, yet down the street, they don't know what they are going to eat tonight. Somebody must be a Mordecai. No, no, no. This is the, the point of staying at the gate. When you stay at the gate, you will hear things others don't hear. When you stay at the gate, you will be the first to hear announcements that need to go out to others. When you stay at the gate, people will pay attention because there is no way they can ignore you. Be a Mordecai. Stay at the gate. Stay at the gate so that you can make a difference just like Richard Mapon. My question to you is when your time comes, what will they say about you? Who would you have been a Mordecai to? Whose lives would have been changed because of you? Who will be able to say I am better because this person stepped into my life? It is not possible that God has breathed life into you and nothing happens around you. Morena Jesu came. He was despised and rejected. 
just like a time when that Mabonya says it was not easy. But we made it. We persevered. So you are going to go through things that will not be easy. But you will make it if you just stay at the gate. When in the Lord will come and raise you up. And even though they don't have anything to say, they won't have a choice but to say, Mudimu wa mutu wa May the Lord bless us and help us to be somebody's Mordecai. God bless you. It was not easy, but it was worth it. Let the church say amen. amen. Elron Hubbard once said, at the end of our lives, we'll be asked two questions. The first question we'll be asked is, did you do the things you were supposed to do on this earth? And the second question that you'll be asked at the end of the life is, did the people who knew you think your life was worth it? Many will attest today that this life which was well lived was worth it. And first to attest to that is William Maponya, a nephew of, of, of Dr. Maponya, who will speak on behalf of the family. Good morning, Raledu uh, Medisha. Good morning and thank you very much for coming to this church to come and be with us and pray with us uh, because of the loss of uh, one of ours. Now, I've been asked by the family to speak on behalf of the family. You know, a couple of days ago, less than 10 days ago, I did not know that on this day, I would be talking about him as the person who is no more, where I have to attest about what he has done. It is very sad, and uh, unfortunately, uh, the truth can be very difficult and it has, and this is the truth, and it has that Dr. Richard Pilwana Maponya is no more. That is sad. We have already heard some of the things that he has done, but Dr. Richard John Pilwana Maponya, who is he or who he was, let us examine his life a little bit and share with you some of the things which you may know or you may not have known about. The man became who he was not because only of education and not because he was lucky somewhere. He was who he is, who he was because someone loved him, someone nurtured him, someone taught him how to be a human, taught him how to respect other people the same way as you would respect yourself. And those people, that the two of them, was none other than his parents, Chichi and uh, Khabani Godfrey Maponya. And uh, he named his two children after his parents, and they are with us here today. Now, as a family man, we know, most people know him as a businessman, but we know him as a family man, as a father, and uh, as a father, a loving father, who would make sure that all his children, and not only his children, the grandchildren and everybody else whom he came in touch with to say that education for him was the key. He used to tell us that, look, you've got to 
educate yourself. For you to survive in this tough world, you need to be educated. That is one of the things that uh, he, in actual fact, was very passionate about. Now, what about now when it comes to uh, the community? He would not talk about business and not mention Soweto and the people of Soweto at large. He strongly believed that whatever contribution he could have made in terms of uh, what he was doing, which will create jobs, and he would like to do that. And until his last day, he was still complaining about the economy, the economy not being good, not be a being able to support its citizens. And that worries, worried him a, a lot in terms of uh, people getting jobs and things like that. And I'm sure some of the speakers will attest to that because uh, he has spoken to many people and he has touched uh, many lives. Now, his business involvement, I'm gonna, we all know that his business started somewhere around the 50s uh, when he came uh, from uh, the then Petersburg to uh, Northern Transvaal to uh, around Johannesburg. And uh, he was working for a clothing store. Working for a clothing store because he was so energetic and hardworking person, he was then promoted and then to be a, a buyer. But that could, that could not satisfy him doing that for someone else. He was not that kind of a person. He wanted to do things himself. And uh, what did he do? He done the job, which many of us, or many people cannot do because they, we always think about what if the business does, it doesn't work, what am I going to eat? That's not what he did. He left that job and started based on the, his experience in that clothing shop. Then he started now selling second-hand clothing from door to door. Then once he, has he had accumulated enough funds, then that's when he started now uh, to try and build his business, diversifying into the milk business, where he was selling uh, uh, milk and delivering because there were no electricity in Soweto at the time and there were no fridges. So therefore, he had to make sure that he then get people, young people, on bicycle to go and deliver the milk every day because people needed fresh milk. That went quite well, uh, fortunately. But then now I want to focus a little bit on uh, his, one of the first shops he had in Soweto, which was the uh, smaller shop uh, out in Dube. That shop, I did not know at the time, and there was no shop like that that I can think about in South Africa, where it was what we call, the marketing people calls, uh, a store within a store. Why am I talking about a store within a store uh, around in Soweto? And I will call it exactly as the license, uh, you know, said on the license, because I remember sometime they going down this house in Dube, then he was opening the drawers, and so, so he showed me the license. That license uh, was giving him permission to sell groceries and also uh, a, a butchery there and a Bantu eating house. That's what the uh, license said. And why do I call it a store within a store? Because within that building, which was a brick and mortar one, uh, he had a butchery, a grocery store, and that Bantu eating house that I'm talking about. And I remember on the west side, there used to be some glasses and shelves there where he, was, uh, he used to sell 
over-the-counter medicine. But because the law at the time did not allow the medicine to be sold, I mean, the Kura powders and all those kind of things, Vicks and all those stuff, that because they, they, the law did not allow that those things, items could be sold on a Sunday, then he would take brown paper that we were used on the one side in the butchery to cover that particular shelf so that no, they would, if, if the inspector walks in, then they will be able to see that no, those ta items were not sold. That takes a lot of uh, thinking for someone to think and come up with a concept which we now to today know as a, a store within a store. Um, Woolworths has got many of those. You will find different, blanks, different uh, brands within uh, Woolworths, but that's what the concept of what we call a store within a store. Now, he was many things to many people. We know that he's been, uh, he was the founder and the trustee of the Mandela, uh, uh, Mandela uh, Children's Trust, and uh, he was also uh, uh, a member of the, the, the African National Congress, and that is not a secret. But what did he do for the African National Congress even before uh, it was unbanned? What he did, most of the young people and with those who were uh, the organizers in the country, they used to go to his shop uh, at night and go and talk to him and say, look, we need money, we need to take people out of the country. Quietly, he would make sure that he gives the money to those people. He, he, he had no problem with the, you know, uh, the issue of charities. However, he used to say to me, charity must not be in, at the expense of justice. And why did he say that? He says, when you give someone something, you mustn't give that person because you want favors from that particular person. And he, did, he believed very strongly that you can give, but just don't give because you want something in return. You must give because you want to give. I was at the NAFCOC uh, memorial service yesterday. Someone explained his name Beloana, and what does that name mean? Beloana, it means a small heart. We all know that his was a big one, contrary to his name. And because of his uh, love for education, some time ago, he went to Brazil. Then, after seeing what the Brazilians were doing, he then came back and said he wanted to do what the Brazilians are doing to train people in terms of uh, skills and also in terms of uh, entrepreneurship. Because he did not believe in you know, trying to buy something there for 20%, 30%. No, that's not what he believed. He believed in starting something from the beginning. And if you look most of his project, that's what he started where there was nothing. You can talk about the mall. It was an empty ground where children used to go and play soccer. But although he owned it, but it took him quite a long time uh, for, he, for him to develop that particular area. But for him, property, once you have a property, you don't sell. And he's not selling, he never sold any properties. He used to acquire properties whenever the opportunities, uh, the opportunity arose. Going back to the issue, and he established that uh, jointly with the uh, UJ, then he established uh, Richard Maponya Institute for Skills and Entrepreneurship. That just show how he was when it came to the issue of education. He was passionate about the education, and up until his last day, education, education, and education. But if you wanted to talk to him about, about business 
and you did not mention Soweto. Uh, you haven't said much to him because he believed that uh, there is business in Soweto and all that Soweto needs, he believed, is the development of Soweto. And he believed that through this uh, Institute of Skills and Entrepreneurship, people will be trained in such a way that they don't depend on employment, but they depend on employing themselves and creating more jobs. Ladies and gentlemen, with those few ways, I would like to end right here because there are many people who are going to go into details with some of the things that I've said. I can stay here the whole day and talk about your BMW, Chevrolet, then uh, Toyota, and so forth and so forth. But I know that some of the people in this room will be talking about those issues in details more than I can do. So with those few words, I'd like to say thank you very much. I would like to, you know, Thomas Sankara, you know, great African, was once asked, how would you want to be remembered? And he said, I would want people to say that my life has been useful to humanity. And that's what you're going to be seeing a lot today. There are a lot of, and what you've heard just now, is a testament to how benevolent uh, uh, Dr. Richard Mapunya was, not just to family, to friends, but to the community and to, and to the continent. I'd like to ask Ladi Adelusi, who's part of the Mapunya group, just to give us a brief um, uh, uh, words on, uh, on working with Ntate Mapunya. Uh, be, as, as he comes onto stage, uh, CG09TD, you are blocking traffic. CG09TD, please uh, move. Bloody, please come. And you know, we're living in social media times, right? So there's a hashtag even for this, hashtag RIP Richard Maponya. So I know people have been doing selfies out there. And you know, as you're watching Richard, yeah, Richard, you're not a shop at the Jewish, yo. I mean, <laughs> those who know, who know him from whenever, you know, when you have his car and the horse on the car and he steps out of the marina. So today I put on a suit, people I did not put on cloth today. And I see a lot of people, but it's not just for him. We're here out of respect for Richard. It's not today. Thank you very much. Greetings, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Very special greetings and condolence to the Maponya family. May the good Lord grant us all the strength to bear this huge loss. I am greatly honored to be called upon to deliver a speech at this special memorial for the great icon, Dr. Richard John Pelwana Maponya. First and foremost, I would like to give glory to the Almighty for his life. Uh, this should be a celebration of his life and lifetime for a life well spent. I will try and keep it as short as possible as I can write a book on our relationship in the past five years. I met Dr. Maponya briefly for the first time in 2011. Later on, I was called upon by my employers at the time, Barlow World, to establish and run the greenfield operation of the two dealerships in Soweto. Soweto Toyota and Soweto Volkswagen. To this end, Baloward seconded me to Baloward Maponya in Soweto. During this period, I developed a very special relationship with Dr. Maponya. In February 2013, I left Baloward to pursue other interests. I left full-time uh, employment to establish my own business in November of 2014, and as fate would have it, I reconnected with Dr. Maponya in March of 2015. I agreed to assist him in addition to the other structures already in place in his business. Dr. Maponya sat me down in the first few days and told me his vision for the next couple of years. The relationship was supposed to be on as I am needed basis, but within days it developed to seeing each other on a daily basis and getting involved in his entire business. I was amazed at his tenacity and hands-on approach 
especially given his age at the time. Most people will have long retired. Dr. Maponya was a man of action. He sets goals and makes sure it is achieved at all costs. In the last five years, the following are examples of accomplishment from the vision he discussed with me in those first few days. Uh, working hand in hand with him, he reopened his bottle store in Aledi. He reopened the Maponya BP in Soweto along Clip Spread Valley Road. He expanded the egg laying poultry business from less than 40,000 layer hens in 2015 to the full farm capacity of 110,000 layer bears in 2016. He established the broiler farm, starting with an annual production of 1.8 million broilers in, in 2016 to 5.4 million in 2019. There are six houses under construction that will be brought into use in March 2020, raising its broiler production to 7.5 million per annum from March 2020. My relationship with him goes beyond the call of duty. Over the years, the relationship developed into a father and son relationship. He insists I attend most, if not all, of his meetings. We became confident. We held at least three meetings a day, three times a week. Official meetings we end at about 5 p.m. However, I will remain with him at night, discussing various business and other issues and listening to his life journey from which I've learned a whole lot. Very often we'll be sitting and chatting till 9 p.m. or even later in his own office. And all we talk about is about work, 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 work. We grew so close that we will tell each other the same life story more than three times in a single night. <laughs> Every time we repeat a story, it feels like new. Repeating same twice or thrice or even more in the same week, we enjoyed each other's company. As time went by, every time I arrive at, at this place, I will be asked if I was on night shift. Uncle Roy, Auntie Mabuse, and Chichi, Soli, Boni, and even the grandkids will always ask me, is there night shift tonight? <laughs> I got accustomed to it, and I'll just answer them, yes, of course. I was asked to move in next door in a room next to him so that I do not have to drive home late at night. However, I could not because of my wife and the kids. <laughs> <laughs> the relationship became more of a father and son that I referred to him as Papa rather than Dr. Maponya. We spoke every day or almost every day, all about work. Even my 18-year-old daughter, 15-year-old son, and the little girl that is only eight, whenever my phone rings, it's like, is that Papa? And I will say to her, what Papa? No, I mean Papa Maponya. I mean, that's how close uh, we were. We spoke before going to bed and first thing in the morning, all talking about work. Some nights he will phone me at about 10 p.m and remind me that we haven't had our usual telephone call before going to bed to discuss what we are going to do the next day. If I haven't called him by 11 a.m. the next day, he will phone me to find out if all is well with me, uh, as we haven't spoken on the day as yet, irrespective of the fact that I will still be with him that same day. He called and talked to me anytime, day and night. I was always on standby for him. We ate and dined together severally. I became his right-hand man, assisting him with almost everything, including his domestic chores. I was his driver when the need arises. Uh, he's a man who wants to be on the go, 24-7, 365. I will often say to him, Papa, please take it easy. Or can we postpone going to the farm or other business trips? just for him to rest after a hectic few days on the road, meetings, doing business. And don't get me wrong, uh, Papa was a person that, um, the farm I'm talking about is in Mahalis. 
If I talk to him at 10 p.m. and say, please don't go, I will go to the farm just to make sure that everything is okay. And he will say, no, laddie, that's all right, you can go. I promise you, by the time I get to Mahali, he's there waiting for me. <laughs> and whenever I tell him to take it, take it easy, he will reply, laddie, you are getting soft. What are you going to do when you die? You only rest when you die. Papa kept true to those words. We shared a lot together, and I learned a lot from him, including business knowledge, how to be resilient in life, a lot about life lessons, secret to good life, a lot of wise words, among others. Over the years, I became not just a worker, but a member of the family. Papa will always refer to me. He gave me a, a doctorate degree, and he will always call me Dr. Ladi Adelusi Maponya. The last time I saw him was on Thursday, January 2nd, 2020, and he still referred to me by that name. Papa has an unmatched work ethic. I mean, I've been around, I've been working for not as long as him, 30 years plus. I don't think I've ever met uh, anybody with the kind of uh, Papa's work ethic. At his age, his work rate is unbelievable. Everybody goes on leave in December, especially between the 24th and the 2nd of January at least. That is not him. We became close that ever since I met him, we would agree that everybody can go on leave. However, the two of us carry on with the work, the whole festive season. Even up until 2019, we always talk about the Sierra Leonean proverb that the stomach does not go on holiday. <laughs> we also often refer to the biblical sheep that fall into a well on a Sabbath. Although it is a public holiday, however, we still have to eat. His memory was unequaled, even days before his death. He remembers numbers and events from years back. He still signs his own check. I think he's one of the few that I've encountered who still uses a checkbook in a modern world of today. <laughs> he still authorizes his own payment, and the bank still confirm, still phone him to confirm those payments. And the last time this happened was, uh, was on January 2nd, uh, 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 2020. He loves writing letters and will always reply to all correspondence officially. He loves reading his emails, irrespective of who and where it originated from, and he will always respond. He grants every meeting, irrespective of who is requesting the meeting. He looks at every business proposal sent to him and is always available to grant audience to everybody who want advice on new or existing businesses. He always think of everybody around him, whether relatives or not. He believes in genuine empowerment. He believes in teaching a man how to fish so as to have food for the rest of his life, rather than giving a man fish, which he will eat once and come begging for more. He believes in the Ghanaian pro proverb, a healthy beggar is an insult to the generous farmer. We were planning a trip to China this year to purchase some equipment for his business, and I was still trying to convince him to stay while myself and one of the kids go on his behalf, which he was yet to agree to. Papa also had a good sense of humor, but was a disciplinarian as well. His kids, personal driver, personal assistant, and grandkids knew him very well and uh, they know the lectures they normally get, especially when they are trying to misbehave. And uh, he will always call me to order. I still remember very well him telling him, whenever I go to him and say, sir, I've just done one, two, three, which is out of my brief. Uh, can I get something extra? He will say, laddie, that was an in-house service. That is a time he used whenever I want him to compensate me for something, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> I could keep you all here for the next couple of days talking to demonstrate that he died with his boots on, like he always say. I was with him for the last time before his death on Thursday, January 2nd, 2020, and he still gave me a number of instructions. Part of the instructions were to organize meetings to discuss the following, the week starting Monday, January 06, 2020, as a way of kickstarting the new year. He wants a poultry value chain whereby he can control the value chain from beginning to the end. He wants to expand the Maponya Institute. Unfortunately, he left us in the early hours of Monday, January 06, 2020. I believe those of us that he left behind, we work hard to achieve the dreams and aspirations that he left behind. His shoes are too big for anyone to feel. Hambali Kashli, Adieu Papa, may your gentle soul rest in perfect peace. You know, at 99, I think Papa was allowed to repeat the same speech every day. So anybody who's got a grandfather can relate to that, you know, or, a, or an older father. A father. Uh, one of the things that Papa used to do every Christmas is to he loved to gather his grandchildren and he loved to regale them about the stories of his entrepreneurship. So as Lad is speaking, we know what he's talking about because he'll repeat the same stories for the grandchildren every Christmas day as if it's the first time uh, he's telling the story. Of course, over and above, the key message would always be, you must remember, you're not doing this for yourself, you're doing this for the community. I'd love to call to stage his grandchildren, uh, Sechaba, Mabuse and Tlantla Tlajwai to represent some of the grandchildren to speak to us. Sechaba, Mabuse and Tlantla Tlajwai. Greetings to everyone. Shaba and I will be doing a tribute to Gogo on behalf of all the great grandkids. You can shed tears that he is gone, or you can smile because he lived. You can close your eyes and pray that he will come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that he has left. <clears throat> you can be full of love that you shared, or you can turn your back on tomorrow and live for yesterday. You can all, you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember him and only that he is gone or you can cherish his memory and let it live on. You can cry, close your mind and be empty and turn your back or you can do what you would have wanted, smile, open your eyes and live long. Gogo, we know you are no longer with us. You fought long and, long and hard to be with us. We know now you watch over us and protect us. Although we cannot hear your voice or see your smiling face, we know deep down in our hearts that you have not left us. I guess heaven needed a hero. You slipped into another world, a place where we cannot be. Time can no longer touch you, and so can we. The dark turns into night, and the sun all set and gone. Though our tears have blurred our sight, your memory spurs us on. Gugu kept a garden. Our great grandfather kept a garden, a garden of the heart. He planted all the good things that gave our lives their start. He turned us to the sunshine and encouraged us to dream, fostering and nurturing the seeds of self-esteem. And then the winds and rain came. He protected us enough, but not too much because he knew we would stand up strong and tough. His constant good example always taught us right from wrong, markers for our pathway that will last a lifetime long. We are our great grandfather's garden. We are his legacy. Thank you, Coco. We love you. Thank you. 
Jessica Mbangeni. Like Moses, standing on the mountain, feasting on the promised land of milk and honey. Like Martin Luther King, screaming, I have seen the promised land, but I may not get there with you, but my people will get there. Is Nyanya Zati? Pilwana Richard Maponya. Pilwana Richard John Maponya. It's time to come home to your fathers. It's time to come home to your great grandfathers. It's time to come home. Um Zamo Zamile. Your work is done. Kotuka kohala makoha. Kotuka kawala makawe. Oh! Insika inga wa. Basala bezis tenga basenkini. Kunga kauke popula pelu yolo kuma tungi. Kusibagele. I hashlan kumanda lila tekile. In Slovenia was Nancy in Slovenia was much younger. It's Angela Lantelania Bomi. Nam Singu Bakwama Ponya, Ilala Yo to a book Solomon party. Kufandini Kufandini Ulutab and Tonessa Petasako Yaziki Angile and Ganawanguntu, Wakum Kakwako, Dr. Richard Maponya. Nam tazis in Halas young Hulekam, comes with Africa Pella, sitting coming on my camp and canene, his angry pequa, Gokbakalakum Felinganki, um tatil no Salaway Africa, the giant of Africa, the mind holder of generations, the redeemer and release of humankind from stumbling blocks and obstacles of our daily living, the man of all dispensations, the devourer of truth, love, and peace. Conceiving it in his righteous heart, giving birth to the life giving pioneers by not accepting any discrimination, but empowering the black child. Oh! So tell us, your name is written on the mighty dragon's back, Pesco Katamba, on Cape Akal House, where two mighty oceans meet. Today, Richard Maponya is the prophet, like Prophet Hail Silasia, who gave granted Nelson Mandela the visa to travel all across the African continent to mobilize and fight against the struggle in us in Africa. Richard Maponya is the prophet. Oh, we will always remember you, Tata. For memory is our heritage. It helps us to preserve our cultural integrity, sustain our heritage intelligence, and maintain our traditional protocols. Mandela's a matolo kaka betuna. Mandela's a matolo mkuba. Mandela's a matchatle zolo mzavala so. Tete Richard Maponya kaunga teka lugu baletola nuta misango zolo. Sign ngo Congo is a boy in pendulo. Deham. Deham. Ding. Viva Richard Maponya. Viva. Viva Richard Maponya, viva! Amanda! Viva ANC, viva! Amanda! See, Mandini Agaba first, Belinda, upon Tagad. Our, our national Limbongi, Jessica Mbang, Mangeni. 
to love often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to live a world a bit, a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition, to know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. Let us watch a short clip from uh, Richard Maponya in his own words on what his intentions were as he was living his life from 1920 to 2020. I'm Richard Maponya. Uh, born in, in a place uh, called uh, Limpopo today. When I qualified as a teacher, I was requested to come to Johannesburg to teach a standard six and standard seven uh, children in, in Alexander Township. Just when I was waiting to take over my teaching post, I was then requested to go for an interview. I got employed there. We started uh, selling a lot of clothing to a point where just by a touch of a, a piece of cloth, I would even tell you where this piece of material origin from. And everything that I selected just got sold. I wanted to put up a, a first a clothing store in Soweto. This was in the 60s. Black people were really not supposed to be in business at all. I went to Mandela Tambo, uh, they were young attorneys then. We, we did not succeed in getting uh, the license of uh, clothing. And they sort of gave me a license to say, I can only sell what they call daily necessities. I understood milk very well because we used to milk a lot of cattle where I grew up. There was only one jockey who, um, who said, look, I will ride your horses. And then Jeff Lloyd. For the first time, the horse uh, ran about fifth. And the second time, we just had the commandita say, they are now taking the turn home. Here is another color in the fence, making a run. 300 meters to go, another color hit in the front. Yes, another color, father shouting, another color is winning. You know, when, uh, when they said that, black people ran amok. They all rushed to the winning enclosure, wanting to just lift me up and congratulate me. The white people ran for cover. They thought it was a, a riot. <laughs> Everybody ran for cover. I felt so happy and proud that uh, at least I brought in something which uh, was appreciated uh, by my own people. They uh, agreed with me when I said, I want to put up a mall that can stand anywhere in the world. I would say to my young people, get educated, get trained to be a hands-on man. Even if you are matriculate or uh, graduate, 
you must be able to use your own hands and get into business. And if you are educated, you are able to assist in addressing the biggest thing that is called uh, poverty. You work very hard, stop doing drugs, engage yourself in things that uh, would help your community. Two years ago, I sat with Papa and on stage, just the two of us on stage in the group uh, in Soweto Theatre, and I asked him, Papa, what kept you going? Why did you keep pushing so hard against all those obstacles that he's highlighted? And he said, if I gave up, I would have let my people down. He says, I was not going to give up. And a lot of people will come and attest in the next few minutes how his legacy has contributed to their success. We are live on television, so I would request that we uh, are brief so we can get as many people to attest to this great life. First up, I would like to ask the CEO of Redefine, Mr. Andrew Koenig. Papa already spoke about 2007 when he established um, Maponya Mall in Soweto. Uh, many will recall that um, Papa drove Nelson Mandela for the time he came into South Africa. Uh, into from jail uh, 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 to, 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 to Johannesburg. And the second thing people will recall is that in 2007, when Papa wanted to open, when, when Papa launched the um, uh, Mapunya Mall, Richard uh, uh, Nelson Mandela is the one who cut the ribbon. Mr. Cornick, two minutes. Good morning, everybody. In the passing of Dr. Richard Maponya, South Africa has not only lost a visionary and an entrepreneurial genius, but also an amazing human being. It's not hard to be inspired by his story. Coming from the darkest days, he translated his vision into a business empire that we, as all South Africans, can be very proud of. Challenging adversity, Dr. Maponya became one of the most successful and influential figures of our time bringing income and infrastructure to Soweto in the form of Maponya Mall, which we are fortunate to co-own with the Maponya Family Trust. Those of us at Redefine who had the, pl the pleasure and the very rare um, privilege of knowing and working with Dr. Maponya have lost a dear friend and a very wise mentor. A shareholders meeting never went by without Dr. Maponya's presence always impeccably dressed. What struck me the most is that Dr. Maponya deeply cared, mostly for the relevance and well-being of this community that Maponya Mall serves. For him, this ranked far higher in his list of priorities than even a return on his own investment. As a country, this is a priority we must also adopt to make South Africa a sustainably better place for every one of us. What I'll remember the most from these engagements is that Dr. Maponya respect, respectfully and attentively always listened to every spoken word and never interrupted anyone's opinion. Only once everyone had spoken would he close with his view. No meeting ever ended without there being consensus from all involved and our relationship with Dr. Maponya and his family is and was built on honor, trust, and utmost respect. Having left us at the exceptional age of 99, Dr. Maponya's story will continue to inspire us and keep us focused to ensure that his legacy through the Maponya Mall lives on. Let us all believe in the opportunity of entrepreneurship like Dr. Maponya. Let's put aside our fears and work together for uncommon solutions so that we as a nation can achieve uncommon success. No words can express our sadness at the loss of Dr. Maponya, but we can take comfort from celebrating and being thankful for how his life has touched 
all of ours through the lasting legacy he has created. Our sincerest condolences go to them upon your family and all those who had the privilege of calling him a friend. The truest, the truest homage we can pay the stalwart as a nation is to recreate and live his optimism and tenacity. Hambak Ashley, Dr. Mapanya, and with that, I thank you. Mapanya Moyle has got two, here's a commercial. Mapanya Moyle has got over 200 shops. So I'm hoping that when we live here, we are going, the only way we're going to pay homage is to make sure those shops are always full. You know, so we want Papa to smile wherever he is and says, yeah, you see, it's worked. It's worked. Um, so continuing along, the people who know Papa uh, are very well. I'm going to ask uh, Ronald Eger from, uh, from Barlow World. We all heard the story about how Papa established the first um, BMW dealership. Uh, if you're going to Soweto, you, you, you know the shops, uh, the dealership standing there on the mountain. And um, a few years later, and even now, uh, Papa is back in that business still, uh, and with Barlow World as, as a partner. And now they sell more than BMW. They sell many other vehicles. Mr. Roland Eger, two minutes. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, firstly, I think on behalf of Bollywood to, to the family, our sincerest condolences, Chichi, Solly, Roy, uh, family that we've worked with uh, very hard in the, last, in, the last, in the last 10 years. Our relationship with Doc Maponyo spans a decade, just about, which is a very small part of a, an, an amazing life of 99 years. Our relationship, although only 10 years old, has given me an insight into Doc that I think is absolutely phenomenal. The relationship, however, was born out of a, a dream that we established two dealerships in, in Soweto. That was a Volkswagen and Toyota dealership. And as I think Ladi mentioned earlier, Doc always wanted to establish world-class operations in Soweto. And that's where that dream started. I can clearly remember one of our very first meetings when Doc must have been somewhere between 89 and 90. And when I walked out that room, I thought to myself, wow, at 89, what a man. And I think those of you that have spent time with Doc would absolutely attest to that. But by the time we'd met, we had met Doc, he was already 89 years old and already a legend in his own right. I can also remember many stories that, uh, that Doc would have shared, and I think Lottie also, Lottie, you've had a lot more stories, but Doc used to share a lot of stories with us, and I'm, in the interest of time, I won't, I won't to share too many of those. But reflecting on all those days and, and the meetings that we had, we were fortunate to have meetings at, at the business and in Doc's home, which is, a, which is a privilege, an absolute privilege. But there were f four or five things in Doc's life that were very dear to him, and absolutely the first that struck me was his passion for his family. And I think we've heard many people attest to that this morning. The passion for the family was always Doc's first passion. And his absolute enthusiasm for business. As Lardy mentioned, when you spoke to Doc about business, those eyes sparkled. And you know, if you want to look into the soul of someone, you look into the eyes. And those eyes always sparkled when you spoke about business. Doc always had an easy smile. You know, Doc, you would have seen on the video, Doc just beamed when he smiled. But as Lardy said, sometimes Doc would say, Roland, that's not how we're doing it. And I think one really appreciates that. Coming from a, from a man of that wisdom, where there's encouragement, but there's also that discipline to say, we are not doing it this way. Doc was a tough businessman, for sure. And I think we've, we've attested to that. But a soul and a human being like I've never seen in my career of about 35 years. But almost most importantly for me, whatever Doc did, he did with the utmost of respect and humility. And for a person of Doc's stature, a person of 99 years, to still be humble in interaction, to still be humble in business, to still be humble in everything he does, I think says a lot for the man. I think there are not many certainties in life, but the one certainty is that we all leave this earth at some stage. But what is important in the final analysis 
is how we are remembered and the legacy that we leave behind. I think from, for, for Doc, Doc has lived a very full life. He's lived 99 years, but they were very, very full. But Doc also leaves a legacy that I think all of us, both young and old, need to understand, respect, and try and live up to. Rest in peace, Doc, and the family, our thoughts are with you. Many would, thank you, Roland, many would recall that the first black bank uh, was established under the leadership of Dr. Richard Maponya. Uh, African Bank was an initiative of, um, of, the, of NAFCOC and Richard Maponya was one of the leadership of Dr. Mutsuanyani. People will recall that he raised one million. I don't know what you can get with one million these days, but uh, those days we got a whole bank. Uh, and one of the men at the helm of that bank was Gabi Mahumola, for whom Dr. Richard Mapunya also wrote uh, the foreword to his autobiography. Rich, uh, Gabi Mahumola. And I know a whole lot of us have got so many stories about Papa, so um, I'm quite uh, excited that we're all trying to keep to the time. And, and just a couple of highlights. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks very much, uh, uh, Mr. Salamonis. Um, this is a tribute to my mentor, my father, and a friend of our family. During our lifetime, we walked through pathways, we walked through crude roads and corrugated roads, we walked through suburban roads, we walked through avenues and we walked through boulevards, as well as large expansive motorways and flyovers. But as we traverse these walkways and driveways, we meet hundreds and thousands of people and strangers who may not matter in our lives. It has been said, though, that as a general rule of thumb, at least five people will make a difference in your life and an impact on you. My mentor, my father, my friend, Richard, was one of those. I should explain to those who don't know why I'm here and who I am. I met Richard 38 years ago when I was a young and brash banker, and his wife, Marina, who was on the board of West Bank, a subsidiary of Barclays Bank before it was called First National Bank at the time. And um, uh, this was the year, of course, when Prime Minister P. W. Boto was unable to cross the Rubicon, um, but a lot happened in spite of that, including the plummeting of our currency and our economy. Through my association and that of my wife, um, uh, myself and Richard expanded our horizons, and as fate would have it, we became neighbors with this giant, me in the tiny suburb of Wendywood, and him in the leafy suburb of Hyde Park. I, of course, knew my station in life. <laughs> <clears throat> the poet John Donoghue says, there is a reduction of identity to biography. It is the eulogy eulogist's job to fight against reductionism and to attempt to share the breadth and width of a life fully lived such as that of Richard. This, dear friends, is what I thought I would try to do, but for the pleasure of time today. Suffice it to say that Richard, born in 1923, lived through, through two world wars. Well, he was born just after the end of the First World War and saw the beginning the continuation and the end of the Second World War when I came into being. He lived for 99 years. I only knew him for 38 of those years. Who am I then in the grand scheme of things to claim knowledge of this giant, to claim knowledge of the breadth and width of such an illustrious life? But dear friends, let me attempt to give you a few examples of this great man. Richard Maponya, the trailblazer. This enormous man of elephant stature, both in totem and gravity, intruded into my life in 1983, shortly after my tentative return from far off lands, which I turned into my refugee from the refugees of a system they called apartheid. We met and shared lots. 
And let me share with you this one little story, but you already saw some of it on the video. I was there when that happened with Richard at Turfontaine. I'm very pleased to say that um, that was my first encounter with horses. <laughs> Let me also share another story of immense proportions with you, dear friends. I guess many of you may be surprised to learn that Dr. Richard Maponia, along with his departed Dube neighbor, activist, and business veteran, the late Dr. Mudrana, were initiators of the first black-owned beverage bottling plant in South Africa. After a long drawn-out war and a battle with Coca-Cola franchise holders in Atlanta, a full-scale war erupted, fought on the battles of Soweto in Atlanta, Georgia. Suffice it to say, these great warriors emerged victorious, and this gave birth to the Kilimanjaro bottling plant in East London, which manufactured and distributed Coca-Cola products to regional tailors. Credit must also be given to their partners, such as the late Justice Sukeya, the late Gibson Tiller, the late Cyril Cobbers, the late Dr. Dr. Jackie Mpafudi's father. All these people are gone, but Richard is the last man standing, or was the last man standing until four days ago. Not only was Kilimanjaro uh, what it was, but it soon listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, ladies and gentlemen, as one of the early birds on the Joburg Bourse. Ladies and gentlemen, you would have to admit that that, that, was, that was a large milestone by Maponya and his men by any standard of measure. I was privileged, yes indeed, you're, you're, it's okay to clap, it's okay. <clears throat> I was privileged to have helped advise and to sponsor this historic transaction during my banking days and thus entrenching my friendship with Uncle Rich. Going towards the end, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to also tell you a very quick story of how Richard defied the apartheid regime how we moved into a place called Senton. I think I've already spoken about that, but um, uh, because of the pressure of time, I'm getting a little bit confused with my sequencing. But, <laughs> but, but I, I have to say to you that, I have to say to you that there, there, is, there, is, there are many great men, but this man, Richard Maponya, is one that I think I think the poet thought about when he wrote the lives that say, the lives of great men all remind us we can make our own lives sublime. And departing as we will, leave behind us footprints on the sands of time. I'd like to say to the family of the Maponias, the, the children that remain, that you have, as someone said, huge boots to fill, but be comforted because you come out of great stock. You come out of stock of a man who refused to say no. The man who always said, I shall die with my boots on. And that testimony has already been given that Richard Maponya was going to die with his boots on. And that is a huge, huge challenge for you, those of the Maponya stock. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Gabby, you're taking my paper. I'm going to be shuffling my papers now because Gabby's taking my papers. Gabby, we're so behind. We should be using iPads. We'll be organized. Look at us. But for those who are using iPads, unlike Gabby and I, um, digital hashtag RIP Richard Maponya. And for those who are watching television uh, from many parts of the world, and I want to send tributes, send your tributes to RJP Maponya, tributes at mapunyagroup.co.za, RJP Mapunya tributes at mapunyagroup.co.za. Continuing along the line of um, people who want to pay tribute to the late Dr. Richard Mapunya, Lindiwe Miambo, who's a group executive for, um, for Human Capital, uh, also, it um, uh, will also come and speak to us. Here we go. Thank you. She said African. She said African Bank as well. 
So Africa Bank is still standing from 1975. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Lindwe Miambu. I am the Group Executive for Human Capital at African Bank. Um, on behalf of Basani Malubleke, who's our CEO, who is away, the executive team, and all the people at African Bank, we'd like to extend our heartfelt condolences to the Maponya family on the loss of our beloved Ntate Maponya. Without Ntate Maponya's vision and bravery and strong entrepreneurial spirit, the dream of a bank for black people would never have become possible in 1975. To think that African Bank launched its first branch in 1975 in Kharangua, in we now today have 394 branches nationally. It's a tribute to his entrepreneurial spirit, which he ignited. We salute and thank him, together with his fellow entrepreneurs, Sam Matsunyane, Reverend Jo Tlongwan, and Achingonyeni, for believing in a dream but also continuing in his life to be committed to creating jobs and countering unemployment. We will never forget the critical role that he played in influencing BE policy and transforming township business when he became the founding president of the National um, African Federated Chamber of Commerce. Throughout all the changes that have happened at African Bank, the bank has remained true to his initial um, to his initial vision, and our primary purpose remains that of advancing the lives of the South African people. We, that is, Maponya's dream of delivering economic freedom lives on at African Bank and is underwritten by a strong culture of significant investment in learning and development. So we have already made this request to the Maponya family because we would like to be part of making sure that his legacy lives on we would like to name our learning center, which is currently in the process of being built, after Dr. Richard Maponya. It will provide a positive enabling environment, which will serve as a reminder and inspiration for all our people and the young learners that we take on at African Bank all the time. We celebrate the life of an icon in closing, a humble giant, a paragon of township business, a champion of transformation, and a giant who defied our date. We proudly join all South Africans in celebrating a life well lived. His passion, vision, and drive will continue to live on throughout our bank, in the hearts of our people, and everyone whose life he has touched. May you rest in peace. Thank you, Linduwe. Many would probably don't know that even in his 80s and in his 90s, Papa was still, I think you already heard uh, from Roland Eger, Papa was still looking at businesses and opportunities and all those. And one of those that he uh, looked into was getting more uh, involved in farming, uh, farming for poultry, farming for uh, eggs and chicken. Um, and Ntombi Machene will come and speak for a couple of minutes to attest uh, to the energy of a man at the age of 99 who was as active, as more active than the rest of us at 19. See, 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 men now. Television, look, man. Program Director, Maponya family, and the community at large, I greet you all. I stand here today not only representing the community of Winterfeld, I stand here representing my personal mentor. Today, I would personally love to speak about God's favor. An average girl from Harangua receiving mentorship from a man like Richard Maponya himself. Papa loved agriculture. Dr. Maponya believed that agriculture was the solution to poverty eradication. Dr. Maponya believed so much in me that I remember he used to tell me stories of him chauffeuring the late Tata Mandela 
from the airport to his home. And little did he know that he did the same for me. Papa summoned Ntate Mike to say, take this girl to my farm in Mahalis. Give her an opportunity to learn as much as possible. I want to see her become commercial. Papa believed in me so much that I would like to challenge all businessmen to do the same. Papa had a heart of gold. <laughs> Papa had a heart of gold. I remember the other day, I used to sit Lizandi at the farm, and I said, Zandi, do you know who your grandfather is? Do you know how privileged you guys are? And that's when I speak of favor. Bahaitu, Ndate Maponya did so much for me and the community of Winterfeld that it would be great injustice that we did not pursue the plans that we had go Winterfeld. I listened to Ladi speak today, and I think he did great injustice by just saying that Papa produced under a million beds. I think people do not understand that producing a million beds in a monopolized environment is difficult. There was a point where Papa was producing eggs and he didn't have a market. And as he would say, Ntombi, these white boys, Baba Pal, I am going to make it. Papa made sure that the farm in Mahalis produces currently a million birds. A cycle is five weeks, guys. When we speak of a cycle, we speak of five weeks. A million birds per cycle. An average man. Now, I sit here and listen to everyone speak, and I feel that we should have honored Papa Asanzani Apil. I listen now to the previous speaker say they would love to name the learning center after Papa, but I think he would have been proud to listen to it, Asanza Appeal. Before I leave, I would just love to read this to the Maponya family, and it goes, I am free. Do not grieve for me, for now I am free. I'm following the path God laid for me. I took his hand when I heard him call. I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work or play. Tasks left undone must stay that way. I found that peace at close of day, if my parting has left a void, then fill it with remembered joy. A friendship shared, a love, a kiss. Ah, oh, yes, these things I too will miss. Be not burdened with times of sorrow. I wish you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life has been full. I've savored much. Good friends, good times a loved one's touch. Perhaps my time seemed all too brief. Don't lengthen it now with undue grief. Lift up your hearts and share with me. God's, God wanted me now, he set me free. And in so saying, thank you for sharing Papa with us. And before I leave the stage, there was a song that the farmers of Winterfeld would have joined me. It says, Maponyalo, my press. My president, my president, my president. Um, thank you so. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, you know, Papa had everything named after him, uh, or after the Mapunya family. So, what the what the what the Mangani reverence forgot to tell you is that the church used to be called the Mapunya Church. And it was an AME church. It's because Marina was so involved. The late Marina was so involved in the church. And she dedicated her life uh, to that church. And, and the, and the Manganyas were very close uh, to, uh, to Raponyas, even though they came later uh, in life. You can see the span of Papa's relationships uh, from very young people to very old people because he inspired a lot of people. David Tapps are Maponya. The Maponyas are also into music.
hand. Greetings to all in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Um, he called me a few times. Go high. I'm going to America. And so, Kialaboha. When we're going to go to America, you are faithful, O oh God. Every day and every hour, you are faithful. Can we do that together? Yes. Okay. You are faithful, oh God. You are faithful, oh God. Every day and every hour, you are faithful, oh God. One more time, say, you are faithful, oh God, you are faithful, oh God, every day and every hour, you are faithful, oh God Almighty. Hallelujah. Thank you, David Tepsa Mabunya. I've said Papa was a man who influenced a lot of people. And one of those uh, uh, people uh, from uh, uh, 
Peter will kill me over this generation. He's part of his generation somewhere, uh, Peter, uh, Peter Wundler. But Peter Wundler's late wife, Dombola Chabalala, uh, was a daughter of one, one, one uh, colleague of Papa, another doyen of, 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 Soweto, of Soweto business. Uh, I think if you come from Soweto, you come from anywhere else outside, and you mention Soweto. If they don't mention Maponya and Chabalala, uh, you're not from there. Well, that's Peter enough, Wundler. That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I want to start off my tribute to Brian Rich, as we used to call him, with a, a tall story. You know what a tall story is. Because uh, Mr. Mapoya was so much larger than life, you know, we looked at his uh, material possessions, uh, his uh, wealth and uh, his prosperity, and we said, wow, what a man. So the tall story goes that uh, and I know Susan Masani is going to love this story. So Mr. Papanya goes to this white uh, bank manager and he says uh, he wants uh, a loan. So the uh, white manager then says, y you know, those days, uh, you know, funding was an issue, much less, uh, like it is today. So the bank manager says, so Mr. Papanya, what's your collateral? So Mr. Papanya says, no, I don't have. So the bandman says, how are you going to pay us then? So then uh, Brahizdan says, you know, every time I wake up, bank notes just come flying towards me and say, good morning, Mr. Mapoya. Good morning to Mr. Mapoya. <laughs> so that's how we always, as young people, thought about, uh, about Brother Rich. Uh, what gives me the right to stand here besides the fact that I come from this smart township called Dube. And Tokyo also happens to come from there, by the way. Almost 50 years to the day, my father died, and Blarich was a member of the burial committee in Dube Soweto. Some members of the burial co committee consisted of people such as Llewellyn Matlumakulu, who happened to be the first uh, uh, bank uh, manager, black bank manager. There was Bolin Modawu, M. T. Mwarana, editor of uh, The World, G. R. Ratabe, David Tebahadi, Richard Gugushe, S. K. Matsike, Derek Koba, W. F. Nkomo, Mr. Murapidi, and so on. Bra Rich would speak at my father's funeral. These were the Hellison days of black business, thriving under the most restrictive conditions. This was a time when white people were defining us as a people, but Brarich ref refused to be defined by anybody but by himself. Names such as Ben Mabuza, the Magezas, Paul Mosaka, Lisolang, Habakkuk, Ephraim Chabalala come to mind, and there were many others. We often talk about Brajlich's uh, pioneering spirit, the trailblazer we always looked up to. And I like to say to young people, in terms of uh, inspiring them, we need to live like Brajlich and begin to start something new, begin something new, be the father or the mother of something, which is what Brarich was. In business or in life, we all need big breaks, and I believe the big break, in my humble opinion, for Brarich was when he met and married Marina Sondlo. Sis Marina was elegant, she was beautiful, graceful, caring, and had a strong spirit of community. She was, in fact, the wind beneath the riches' wings. <clears throat> Hers and the riches, the spirit of community, led them to start the first ever black debutants ball in Soweto to inspire and give pride 
and joy and self-respect to young black children from black communities. He gave jobs to people, including my younger sister who happened to work for, for him because he always said, Abandonaba said, Dube Abazulamba. A little story about the store he started, we heard from Mr. Maponya there. That store used to be owned by a company called Grand Bazaar. And, uh, and Mr. Maponya was a shareholder. And he actually bought out Grand Bazaar to own that store, the original Maponya store. That is the story behind that. Another interesting story, and unfortunately time doesn't allow, is you mentioned uh, the Tleps Sprayed uh, Valley Road. That used to be owned by one Mr. Langa. And Mr. Langa was bought out by Brarich. And, uh, and immediately thereafter, Mr. Langa died from, a, from an untreated glaucoma. And Mr. Maponya looked after Mr. Langa right until his death. That was the caring Mr. Maponya we all know. We will not talk about his sartorial elegance. Every time we would go to his store, we would think and say, what's Brad Rich wearing today? What tie is he wearing? What pocket chief does he have? You know, what color shirt? And we always leave it up to him to the extent that if you look at me, I mean, you can tell I'm... <laughs> mm. You know, none of these young guys today, you find them uh, with uh, tie knots that are so big, you know, they look like uh, an overheated samosa. <laughs> uh, seriously speaking, I, uh, I, I said in a radio interview, I'm finishing off now, uh, uh, Tebe, I, I said in a radio interview that uh, unfortunately, our government doesn't take a, a, a small business seriously, especially in terms of its uh, wealth creation, job creation, and also uh, a, 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 as, an, a, as an instrument to pull us out of the economic quagmire we find ourselves in. And I dared uh, 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 black business formations, uh, you know, and I, I, I dared them to establish an institute to be named after, after Mr. Maponya, Black Business, Small Business Black Institute, and uh, I, I know there is a propensity amongst us to, to, to start new things on such occasions, but already I think there is a vehicle that exists from which uh, you know, we could start this institute to, to galvanize our government uh, you know, to begin to take uh, small business uh, seriously. And I'm thinking of people like uh, uh, patriots, African patriots like Tamim Mazwai and Golani uh, Kobeka to begin such a movement and, uh, because Without small business, uh, you know, you know, we're not going to go far. I could say so much more, but hell, what a guy! Thanks, for Rich. Thank you, Peter. Chairman, he's always laying the rules. Tula Tebe, it's my turn. Um, Father Lawrence Andlovo, family friend, would like to give uh, do a poem. Thanks, Father. program director, members of the family, ladies and gentlemen, I'm grateful that I'm not wearing a tie. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't know what to do with it if it was an overheated samosa. <laughs> we wrote this poem because we wanted to make clear what Papa Maponya has done for black people. He has dignified us that the black man's name may symbolize success. To be synonymous with achievement and not just be the face of poverty. When people saw Soweto, they called it the dusty streets or those who wanted to be successful thought the best way to be successful is to make your way out of Soweto as fast as possible. Today, when we look at his name, we realize that we are alive, glistening with wealth. We're not just the dusty streets, 
black faces are not just the symbol of poverty. I call this poem Richard Maponya because his name needs no predications. It's sufficient. Black, our faces so, poor, as often shown, so garland a man, that so old a mode, so long fixed on black faces, he removed it shattering it into irreparable pieces to expose the most truest face. Black, wealthy, able, and proud. We saw him flex to us muscles we forgot we had, tearing down, building up, dignifying, exposing us to us. Today, we think ourselves worthy. We think ourselves rich, needing not, begging never, black, sufficient, having, and being. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Twas grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining when we first began. Thank you, Faran Lovu. One of the other young men that um, the late Dr. Richard Maponya inspired is a young man from another dusty township called Herman Mashaba, the former mayor of Johannesburg, the founder of Black Like Me. Herman Mashaba. The Maponya family, of the late Dr. Maponya, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. If actually you had told me as a young man growing up during apartheid that I would be standing here today paying tribute to the great Dr. Richard Maponya, I would probably have thought you were crazy. During the time when opportunities for young black people were li limited by an evil system of oppression, there was little expectation that a Hamanskaral born son of a single mother who worked as a domestic work would ever amount to much. Those were the dark days with the obstacles placed before us as young black men by the apartheid government casting a long shadow over our future prospects. Yet, in the midst of those dark days, I recall visiting my families in Soweto during the 70s and the 80s where I was inspired by an emerging black businessman named Richard Maponya. Thanks to Dr. Maponya, as we know him today, I stand here as a success in my own right, honored to be able to pay homage to a man who showed me that we are the captains of our own destiny. Yeah. 
Unbeknown to him, Dr. Maponya sparked a desire in me to follow in his footsteps and establish myself as a pioneering businessman. I can say that with confidence that I'm a man because of the example set by Dr. Maponya. <laughs> Dr. Maponya demonstrated to so many of us aspiring black entrepreneurs that we work, if we worked hard, would overcome oppression and make a success of ourselves. Make no mistake, this was not an easy task. Dr. Maponya's success was not an accident. Instead, his business empire was a product of a lifetime's worth of hard work based on a value system that underpinned every aspect of his life. This is a value system that I'm proud to have adopted in my own life and I'm better off because of that. This morning, I'd like to highlight four of these values that I believe made Dr. Maponya the trailblazer that he was. First and foremost, Dr. Maponya was a family man who viewed family as being a foundational to his success as a businessman. <laughs> Whenever people spoke about Dr. Maponya, it was always in the context of Richard and Marina Maponya. Indeed, the two were inseparable and worked together side by side to build the business empire for which he will be remembered for. In a time when traditional family business are increasingly under threat, Dr. Meponya reminded all of us to put family first and not to take our loved ones for granted. Secondly, Dr. Maponya valued education and skill development as the key to long-term economic growth and development. I recall his desire desire to see a national program of technical training established that would equip a young generation of artisans with the skills required by a growing economy. It is indeed a pity that we have not seen this dream being realized, but I know it will happen. I believe that it is a goal for which we must continue to fight for, not only for the sake of our economy, but to improve the prospects of the 10.2 million unemployed South Africans. Thirdly, Dr. Maponya never shied away from taking risks because he was not afraid of failure. He understood that as human beings, we will make mistakes. Things do not always go as planned, especially in the business environment. By embracing this truth, Dr. Maponya was able to make decisions without the fear of failure that holds so many of us black people behind. When he, attempted, when he attempted something and did not succeed, he would learn from his mistakes and try harder the next time around. Failure in Dr. Maponya's eyes was simply a milestone in our, on a road to success. We should all embrace this approach to life. Lastly, Dr. Maponya believed in the value of hard work and set an example for all of us about what can be achieved when you are willing to invest in time and effort to make it happen. Dr. Maponya, demonstrated to me as a young man fighting against a system that did not want me to succeed, that anything was possible. I came to see his success as a challenge to myself to do better, to be better, and to live better. Today, as, as I reflect on the legacy of this great man, I'm proud to say that I followed on his footsteps. I've modeled my approach to my professional life, my family, on the example set by Dr. Maponya. Dr. Maponya opened my eyes to my own personal potential. He made me believe that every, anything is possible through hard work and determination. For that, I will forever be grateful. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you for the family. In 1986, uh, Dr. Richard Maponya was one of the delegation that went to Lusaka to speak to the then bent African National Congress. So while a businessman had a very strong sense of uh, where the country is going and supportive of the political movement that has brought the freedom to South Africa. I would like to ask the regional executive of the ANC in Johannesburg, Rumi Matang, to address us for two minutes. Hey, asking a politician for two minutes. Uh, but let us try. <laughs> thank, thank you, Program Director. Holy la palan tatema ponya, rata hulibisa matsidiso, mudimu alitise alematlafat. Ladies and gentlemen, 
good, afterno good afternoon. Today we say goodbye and celebrate a giant of our time. The ANC in Johannesburg salutes and honor Dr. Richard Maponya for his contribution towards our struggle. A man defied apartheid spatial planning and changed the landscape of Soweto. When it was not easy to change dormitory settlement of that time, Ndate Maponya was at the forefront. Today, many of us enjoy the fruits of his toil and struggle of making our communities a place to live and not just stay. Ndate Maponya argued that the position and arrangements of a solely so way to residential area must be fought against cosmo cosmology and political order. The clarity of original spatial expression of a dormitory residential supply of labor, he challenged Stanley. His conviction towards challenging the status quo for a mixed use development started during his time. Today, as the ANC in Johannesburg, we speak of corridors of freedom and mixed use development, an ideal that Ntatema Punya started many decades ago. He challenged the fragmented and monostructures of apartheid planning and fought to raise the business related services that were clearly sought by our communities. Before it was legal for us to change the spatial reconfiguration, long before we could dream of a different Soweto. When we had the levers to change the spatial patterns of Soweto, Ntate Maponya had shown us the way. A visionary, a dreamer beyond dreamers, a man that understood main materials of Soweto the key roads and the supply roads of Soweto, he led the way. Ndatema Ponya was not an, an urban planner, not a town planner, but planners of that time, but had a vision beyond many town planners. Planners of that time, even current planners, he had a, a vision of how Soweto should actually be. The importance for different needs of people beyond residential key points and main points of livable city. Early and four pairs of spatial reconfiguration, this work will definitely go into history and archives of how urban settlements change over time. And I'm sure his work will be studied by many urban planners to come. We thank Tate Maponya for changing Kasi to a fine urban fabric and pattern of its economic orientation, bringing hope where there was none, stitching the city and building from fragmented structures and the rise of advanced business-related services. His, his commitment to change township attracted others and accelerated a new urban complex. Dr. Maponya might have left inheritance to his family, but to us, he has left a legacy. God bless you. We thank you. You did well. Thank you for time. <laughs> you did well. There's two good news. One is we have to finish at 1 o'clock. Uh, the second good news is there's refreshments when we get out. Uh, at one o'clock. But if we don't finish at one o'clock, I'm taking away one peanut from everybody. <laughs> the message from the mayor of the executive, the new executive mayor of Johannesburg, Jeff Makubu. My name is Jeffrey Makubu. I am the executive mayor of the city of Johannesburg. On behalf of the citizens of Johannesburg, the residents of Johannesburg would like to pass our sincere condolences to the Maponya family to the business fraternity, and to all the residents of Johannesburg for the loss of this giant, Dr. Richard Maponya. Ntate Maponya was a towering figure in business in Soweto, 
and in Brother Johannesburg. He was a giant, he was a trailblazer, he, he was a mentor to all, to all the young entrepreneurs that were looking up to him. We really have lost a towering figure. A baobab tree has fallen, a baobab tree has fallen. We'll miss the shade, we'll miss the wisdom, we'll miss the guidance that is given to the city of Johannesburg as it relates to entrepreneurship, as it relates to business, as it relates to the economy. Rest in peace, Tate Mabunya. We will surely miss you. My name is Jeffrey Makubu. I am... Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Mayor. We also have a message from a stalwart of the struggle, Dr. Andrew Langeni, and I will read his message. His message goes, I wish to express my deepest condolences to the Mapunya family on the loss of their father, grandfather, great-grandfather, a legendary businessman who hailed from my hometown, Dube, in Soweto. Dr. Richard Mapunya was a struggle icon in his own special way, in his own right. While we chose the political route, he chose the entrepreneurial route, which is equally, if not more, bumpy. However, he overcame all those obstacles, including oppressive apartheid conditions which prevailed at the time, a true exemplary which I urge the youth of South Africa to follow in his footsteps. I have known Richard for many years, from the days when he was selling from his bicycle and opening his dairy shop just around the corner from my house. From there, I knew that whatever he touches will turn into a very successful venture. Always a humble, gentle soul, who was not controversial like some, thus his light shines through his children and grandchildren. The nation has lost a distinguished nobleman and a true pioneer, a decade, a, a true pioneer, a decade of a life well lived. I think a century of a life well lived. Robalaka Khotsotlo, Dr. Andrew Mlangeni, patron and founder of the June and Andrew Mlangeni Foundation. is so if I mess it up there, we'll correct it later. Thank you. Next, we will ask Sbongilem uh, Kabela from the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund. As you know, Papa was also a founding trustee of the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund. Sbongile, Sbongile will honor us with a minute and a half so that we make our timing. It's good to be here. It's good to be here to say farewell to one of Soweto's giants. Maponya and Soweto are synonymous. But Maponya didn't stand alone. He stood with other great giants, thinkers of our time, guiding stars, those who were determined to become the architects of the Soweto's heartbeat, determined to place, to make the place created as nothing than labor reservoirs, reservoirs become the place for intense struggle. I'm here, ukosha, ngfunu kosha na mtlanje, ngfunu kuti ngizalu wa bandu wa bakulu, ngizalu wa omabonya, Nifuna kuti sikhoshe la South Africa so that sizokhumbuza inkokheli zethu zanamhlanje ukuthi we've had leaders we know what it means to be led by people we know we know what it means to have a maponya amongst us we know know what it means to have also for song kempanza amongst us we know what it meant to have a PGQ vundla amongst us I hope you are landing. government is a small business. Nothing is, liberation and freedom is never handed over. My Maponya teaches us. We take it. If you want small businesses, you don't ask for it. You do it. Maponya did it. I want to say, Gifundile go mama kuzwai. Gafunda go kambul. Gafunda go matzek. Kafunda goma mera na mapwenya. Kifunde enough, uguti ngazi uguti. June 16, 1976, when utatu mapwenya na mamu Ellen Kuzwayo stood with us in defense in court. They stood and they chastised the judge and the prosecutor 
and they said, these children should not be in the dock. Your police should be in the dock. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that it served our cause. We still went to jail. <laughs> but it certainly served our spirits. These were the leaders who did not call themselves we, the leaders of society. Society stood and said, these are our leaders. Tatumaponya, the family man. A lot has been said about that. I'm not going to go too far. My husband, who saw me preparing this from last night, said, don't censor yourself. Don't edit yourself. But given time, he'll forgive me, because I wake him in the night and say, listen to me. And then I edit myself. But I will have to, that I'm coming. There's one thing I must say. That Mandela, when he came out of prison, he saw children in the streets. He pulled leaders and he called leaders to a table. One of those leaders was Tatema Bonya. He said, put your resources, your time, your money, your F, everything you've got. Establish an organization that will take care of our children. Look at where the children are today. Take care of our children. He came out of prison. He gave a third of his salary. Mr. Maponya was amongst those, Dr. Maponya, who joined him. I've had the privilege to lead this institution for 20 years. In the end, when they meet together, and as I know the world, as they meet tonight, I want him to say, we didn't only build an institution, we also built a hospital for children. We have seen our children getting healed. There's so much more to say. The MC is pressurizing me, but I just want to say, Chi Chi, when your dad stood taking a huge risk for his family and stood for us in court, we didn't thank you and we never thanked him. We want to thank him. We want to thank all those who were leaders without anybody voting for them, were not um, branch members who, however, led us. I hope today we will remember We've been led by leaders, and amongst them ourselves, leaders will rise again. Thank you. I'll stop the program just quickly for a second, but I think we've heard a lot that our, our Papa was very strong about education. In his words as well, you heard him speak of the importance of education. I'm going to ask the Vice Chancellor of the University of Johannesburg, Prof. Chiliti. I'm going to ask uh, Shaquille Ori from Durban University of Technology. I'm going to ask Professor Ramukhale from Mangosutu to all come up and give me 30 seconds each. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, uh, Sanbonan. Tebe, time is relative. <laughs> that is what Albert Einstein said. As I pondered about the passing of Dr. Maponya and struggled for superlatives to pay tribute to him, I find myself in a Shakespearean mood. And I quote, his life was gentle and the elements so mixed in him that nature might stand up and say to the world, this was a man. He saw it all. 99 years of age, more than twice my age despite my white hair. <laughs> With these 99 years, having been born in the Limpopo province, I think this should be a lesson for those who use their circumstances to explain their achievements. That never allow your circumstances to determine your dreams. This is what he taught us. It is in this foresight and his passionate desire to give back to the community that we at the University of Johannesburg honored him with an honorary doctorate. You can uh, clap. 
And that was not enough. We also honored him with uh, the annual Dr. Richard Maponya lecture. We also felt that was not enough. So we also introduced the annual Dr. Richard Maponya Soweto conference. And that was also not enough. We have uh, the Dr. Richard Maponya Institute for Entrepreneurship, which has trained thousands of people. We did this because his life was indeed remarkable. And what can we learn from his life as I finish Terry? <laughs> because he existed, we have no reason to doubt ourselves. Because he lived, we have no excuse to doubt our capabilities. Because he succeeded, we have no reason to fail. Because he persevered, we have no excuse to give up. Because he was at the center of our economy, we have no excuse to be at the margins of our economy. He showed us that patience is a necessary condition for success. And in conclusion, and this is really the real conclusion, <laughs> I am reminded of the words of Maya Angelou in her poem, When Great Trees Fall. When great trees fall, rocks on distant hills shudder, lions hunker down in tall grasses, and even elephants lumber after safety, she goes on to say, they existed, they existed, we can be, be and be better for they existed. Dr. Maponya existed. Nyabonga, may his soul rest in peace. Shaquille? And after Shaquille, uh, Shaquille Tran beats that, uh, the, the, the scientific professors. Uh, <laughs> uh, ten minutes, try and do it in one second. <laughs> Good afternoon, Maponya family, and all protocol observed. <clears throat> I must first extend the apologies of Professor Ntembu, the Vice Chancellor of uh, DUT, who could not be here today. But I must say, I must acknowledge that when I had the call yesterday to come and represent DUT at the celebration of Tata Mat Maponia's life, I cheered a bit to myself because I wanted to be part of this as he was one of my heroes. The Durban University of Technology is deeply saddened by the passing of Dr. Richard Maponia and conveys its most sincere condolences to the family and friends. But while we mourn, let us celebrate his pioneering spirit, his entrepreneurial drive, and his deep desire to make this world a better place. He was a proud member of the DUT family because he also received an honorary doctorate from our university. And an honorary doctorate is more significant and more prestigious than a doctorate by thesis because it honors the person as a whole. And I must say, the DUT com committee that determines this is a pretty difficult committee. We've turned on people. We do not give honorary doctorates to politicians. Uh, but the easiest one, the committee said, the easiest one was the one to give to Dr. Maponia. Within a minute, there was no debate. We also host the annual Dr. Maponya Provincial Lectures and workshops for students. And I want to highlight the one that in 2018, we had the president of the University of Waterloo in Canada deliver that lecture. Why Waterloo University? Waterloo University has been the number one university for entrepreneurship and innovation in Canada for the last 28 years. And the president's message was very much that of Dr. Maponya. Create the environment for entrepreneurship. The president of Waterloo University also asked that I convey his and his university's condolences to the Maponia family. 
There are many words to describe him, but I won't go into that now, except that to tell you that I also cheered when another color won. But not just because it was the first black-owned racehorse that won. It was, for me, the symbol that it was a message to white South Africa, another color had arrived. The important thing, I think, was he was an example of what Steve Biko was saying. You allow yourself to be oppressed because the most potent weapon in the mind of the oppressor is the, in the hands of the oppressor, is the mind of the oppressed. Dr. Maponia did not allow himself to be oppressed, and we've heard enough of that. In his message to the 2017 lecture DUT, he said that he wished he had the energy and time of youth. This coupled with his experience, he used to take on the challenge of youth unemployment and er eradication of poverty. And you must remember that youth unemployment in this country is at 57%. The lessons we've learned from Dr. Maponya, Ubuntu, living example of Ubuntu, but also the message we give to the youth from him is hard work achieves success, not handouts, nor corrupt tenders. I have to cut the short, but with that, we say Hamba Kashle, Dr. Maponya. Thank you, Professor Ramukhali on the way. Uh, may I request all the speakers uh, uh, just to avail us the, present, uh, the speeches. We want to put them, compile them on, the, on, the, on email, if you send them to us by email, so we can make sure that those people want to read the messages, and the family especially has requested uh, that. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director. San Bonani, Realocha Ndimasiar. I'm going to be very brief, and what I'm going to request you is to, I'm taking my cue from Reverend Mangani. If what I'm going to say makes sense to you, don't say hallelujah, but take it with you to share it with your children. And if uh, what I'm going to say to you doesn't make sense, simply say quietly, Lord have mercy on that lost soul. What I'm going to do is just to share with you what uh, we think Dr. Maponya represents uh, for us as Mangosutu University of Technology. On the 10th of May, 2012, my institution honored Dr. Richard Maponya at the graduation ceremony uh, of the Faculty of Management Sciences. This was after our Senate had adopted a core curriculum that included entrepreneurship as one of the core modules. We honored Dr. Maponya because we recognized that he was a symbol of black entrepreneurship and tenacity. We also honored him because we saw in him the embodiment of two qualities that we seek to inculcate in our entrepreneurship students. And that is courage and self-reliance. Above all, we honored him because we recognize that he was a warrior in, the, in South Africa's austenian struggle for true freedom. And these are the things that as MUT, Dr. Maponya represents for us. Dr. Maponya's courage is the staff of legend, and so much has been said about that. But what I want to say to you is that in most successful cultures, there has been this recognition that to succeed at a personal level and even at a national level, you do need to create the right environment, you do need to create the right systems socially politically, economically. 
However, that is not enough. What is also necessary to succeed at the personal and national level is to engage in what is often a very lonely struggle, what uh, 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 Steve Biko called a psychological struggle. And this is what Dr. Maponya recognized, that while the politicians were fighting the system of apartheid, he had the obligation to engage in a struggle of his own in order to face the difficulties imposed by apartheid. Dr. Maponya could have settled for a job as a teacher because he was a trained teacher, but he, uh, he decided to take the route the, uh, of entrepreneurship with all its uh, risks. In Japanese culture, there are two objects that are often respected. One is the sword, the other is a mirror. The sword represents a vehicle or a tool that you use to fight external problems. And the mirror represents a vehicle that you use to look at yourself. It's something that enables self-awareness. What Dr. Maponya realized in his life was that while the politicians were there to fight the system of apartheid, he as an individual, if he was going to succeed, needed to use, in a sense, a, a mirror to look at himself and say what it is that he could do for himself and for his own people. And this is what we regard as the important lessons uh, coming from his uh, life. The great Russian uh, novelist once said, everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing himself, end of quote. Dr. Maponya sought to change South Africa by changing himself first, by engaging in an inwardly oriented struggle, the type of struggle that is often difficult to engage in. And we need this as a country. This is what I often call South Africa's last struggle, for our people to begin to develop inner resources if we are going to tackle the problems of poverty and unemployment. Let us therefore celebrate Dr. Maponya's life and legacy, and let us thank God uh, and the Maponya ancestors for the gift of life that was his. He lived his life well, and he has taught us how to be the captains of our own fate. Go well, the great elephant, and beseech the power beyond to bring into this country, into this world, more personalities like yourself to bless and inspire more generations. Robalaka Kujoto, Ralebo. Thank you, Prof. We've got a couple of speeches. There are just two, literally, and uh, two, and then uh, just a family message in the end, and then we will, and then we will close. So, um, I'd like to ask Andile. Uh, I'd like to ask and Andile Sipengani, uh, the president of SASCE, to give us a brief. Andile, do you see that clock there? Yeah. Respect it. I will try to do my best to the Maponya family. Condolences, fellow South Africans, good afternoon. SASKI is the Southern Africa Society for Cooperative Education. Its task, main task, is to coordinate work-based learning, promote research on work-based learning, and do international exchange programs for our students from TVET colleges and higher institutions of learning as universities. Now, what I'm going to touch on is that having this institution being launched by the Honorable Dr. Blade Nzimande, the Minister of Higher Education and Training, Science and Technology. We then subsequently moved first to introduce Saski to Dr. Maponya, who well received and endorsed and blessed, and forced us to establish a relationship with the Maponya Institute. It's because of his passion for skills development and education and training, that he felt it important that this vision of SASKI must be carried forward. We are now engaging and collaborating with the Pan-Africanist countries. We are members of the World Association for Cooperative Education. We are keeping on assisting our graduates to be exposed into the world of work, 
However, further on, bringing the culture of entrepreneurship so that they can learn to create jobs using the innovation and technology at hand. To the Maponya family, I would like to further on as I'm closing to say to you, it is not only about what will be engraved into the stone of monuments about Dr. Maponya, but it's about touching the lives of others that is much more valuable to us. We're going to strive to ensure that through Ubuntu leadership, because each and every one of you here represents some leadership in your own space, be it within the family or community or the organizations that you work for. Let's strive to ensure that we instill Ubuntu leadership and touch the lives of others. We'll keep this light burning in the education and training system of ensuring that we address job opportunities, placement of our graduates, and creation of a culture of entrepreneurship. I thank you. Thank you. I think uh, one of the speakers mentioned the colors. Um, so one thing that uh, our Dr. Maponyo and, and Marina Maponyo were known for was the love for the horses. You must remember they were uh, the first black, um, the first black people to get licenses uh, to, be, to be horse owners in the country. And they had their horses in different colors. Richard Maponya's horses were in the colors of the African National Congress, and Marina had the, uh, the horses in her own color as well. To speak to the passion of a man in his horses is Tex Lorena, who will give us just a two minute highlight of the man. Tex, shame the devil and do it in one minute. Good afternoon, family and friends of Richard Maponya. I'm here on behalf of racing, and I was very privileged as a jockey when I was a slimmer guy than I am now. I'm a potato, bag of potatoes heavier. Um, my meeting on uh, Dr. Richard Maponya was at Gosforth Park, my first ride for him. My brother trained for him, Spike Lorena. And um, on arriving for the race day at Gosforth Park, I drive, drove into the car park, trainers, owners, VIPs, being a jockey, we were just made it there. And uh, I saw this beautiful, huge maroon BMW with this gold-plated horse on the bonnet. Any of you guys remember it? Anyway, I said to Dingon, my valet, I said, Dingon, whose car is that? Because, you know, he said, that's, uh, that's uh, Mr. Maponya, you're riding his horse, Seafarer. I said, I better win for this man. I might get that gold horse. <laughs> anyway, Dr. Maponya had a great passion for the horse and he loved the sport of racing. Whenever he had a chance, he got involved with different trainers. I think he was introduced to the racing game by Laurie Jaffe, and then later on Graham Beck, and he was a guest at the stewards, uh, of the gentleman of the turf who used to entertain, and uh, Dr. Maponyo was entertained on many occasions by these great uh, racing stalwarts, and they loved his company and begged him, grow the game, get more owners from your guys. And all I can say is, Solly, thank you for having me say a few words about Dr. Maponyo's uh, passion of racing. And fortunately, I did win on Seafarer. We did clean glasses up at the Stewards. And uh, it's a day to be remembered and uh, treasured uh, in honor of Dr. Maponya. Great man. And guys, when you get involved in racing, speak to Solly. Get out of me. Thank you. Dr. Richard Maponya had 10 children and 25 grandchildren and 19, I think 19 uh, great, uh, great grandchildren. So he, lots has been spoken about his family and his love for his family. And the father of two of those beloved grandchildren has recorded a message to us. He's with us here, but you know, as a musician, Sipo Mabuze, he'll be here, wants to perform. So we've limited him to a video. Well, Dr. Richard Maponya for me was uh, my father-in-law first of all. He was grandfather to my children and uh, it had been always a great privilege to be within the family and to get as much advice and uh, always there to give uh, advice on many, many issues, particularly on 
businesses where I have managed to suck a lot of information from how I can advance some of my my approach to business. And uh, it is a privilege which I do hope many people would realize how they have benefited with him having been amongst the people of Soweto, beyond Soweto and South Africa. I am one of those very, very lucky, privileged Africans to be associated with his family. Thank you, Sipo. We did well, are we? Thank you. <laughs> um, to close, last two messages are, are, are from the family. I'm going to ask the grandchildren, Pale uh, Sa Mabuse, Maite Motsepe Maponya, Zandi Lamini, Pokela Maponya, to come and speak here uh, quickly. Couple of minutes each, uh, not each, uh, to, I'm giving you all 60 seconds together. Grandpa's done all the speaking, so just say thank you, Grandpa. Good day, thank you, Grandpa. Uh, we <laughs> We're just here to read uh, the messages, the special messages that we've received uh, since Grandpa's passing. They read as follows. Please receive my sincerest condolences for your loss. May you find strength and comfort during this very difficult time. Mam Dogo Kabayin Gubani. And the next one. Dear Maponya family, our deepest condolences your for your profound loss. Our thoughts and prayers are with you during this time, and our sincerest sympathies go out to your family. May God give him eternal rest and give you, your family, the strength to bear the great pain. Best wishes, Priyesh Daya. And the last one from me, our sincerest condolences with the passing of doc Dr. Mabonya, since sincerely, Marunik Trading, Chris, Eddie, and Eugene van Logerenberg. That's it. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, this message comes from BP South Africa. Our heartfelt condolences, the families, and our thoughts and prayers. May you be granted strength and comfort during this time. With love, BP South Africa. and sent with hope that the cherished memories you hold within your heart will comfort you today and always. So sorry for your loss. With kindest regards, staff and management of Eep Hall and RCL Group. Good morning all. Um, just a short message. You are a key amongst those who inspired us in our job of education and development. It did not bother you that we use your name as a reference point in all our teaching on entrepreneurship, overcoming adversity, being driven, building an empire out of nothing, dignity in action, and many other lessons that we drew from you. Without your permission, we will not stop. How can we? Hambagashe, Baba Maponi. Good afternoon, everyone. Please accept one warm condolence to the Maponya family for their immense loss of Mr. Richard Maponya regards from BPSA CEO and executive team. With sympathy to the Maponya family, those we hold closest to our hearts never truly leave. They live on in the kindness they have shared and the love they brought into our lives. As Southwest Gauteng TVET College, we would like to extend our condolences to the family. Revelations 21 verse 4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death shall no more, neither shall there be mourning nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Our thoughts and prayers are with you during this trying time. We are deeply honored, sorry for your loss. From the Department of Higher Education and Training, Republic of South Africa. 
And then lastly, with sincere sympathy, it's hard to find the words that might bring you a little comfort in your loss. To the Maponya family, hope, knowing that you are being thought about with deep sympathy and sincere understanding will help somehow to ease your sorrow from CACSA board. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. To the Mabonya family, on behalf of APSA Group, we wish to extend our deepest condolences on the passing of Mr. Richard Mabonya. We honor him for his tenacity and dedication to fighting a system that restricts and undermines the rise of black business. His journey from humble beginnings and success against all odds inspired generations of business people. We acknowledge with utmost appreciation his pioneering spirit and commitment to his country and immediate community of Soweto. We have lost an icon who, in even retirement, continued to seek solutions, unemployment as one of the biggest challenges facing our country. Our hearts go out to you and your family during this trying time. May you find comfort and peace in all the special memories shared with him. Best regards, Wendy Lucas Bull, Group Chairman of APSA Group Limited. Then I just have three more short ones for you. Um, to the Mabonya family, our deepest condolences for your loss. We feel your pain from the Mabuza. The Mabonya family, our heartfelt condolences for your loss from Bala World Limited, Bala World Automotive and Logistics and Bala World Motor Retail. And the last one, wishing, your peace, wishing you peace to bring comfort, courage to face the days ahead, and loving memories to forever hold in your hearts. Regards, the Rosso family at Roscoe. Can I quickly read one last one? It's a message from Adrian Nodia and Suzanne Ackerman. Dear colleagues, South Africa has lost one of its great leaders who was, a, who was an entrepreneur, visionary, and people's person. Dr. Richard Maponya, fondly known as Ndate Richard Maponya, died in the early hours of Monday morning, 6 January 2020, only a few days after his 99th birthday which he celebrated on 24 December 2019. Ndate Maponya was a political activist entrenched in the movement of South African politics, as well as a pioneer in the retail industry, specifically in Soweto. He inspired hope with his perseverance in Tennessee when he succeeded against all odds. He will be remembered for, transformation, for transforming the economy of Soweto with his numerous developments, to name a few. With his wife, Marina, they established the Duba Hygienic Dairy, which employed people on bicycles to deliver milk to customers in Soweto who had no access to electricity or, re or refrigeration. By the 1970s, the retail empire had grown to include several general stores, car dealerships, and filling stations. He was a founding member and the first president of the National African, National African Federated Chamber of Commerce. Him and his wife also had a long-standing association with our founders, Mr. Raymond and Mrs. Wendy Ackerman. Together, they had a vision to refu to re re pardon me to revolutionize retail under the apartheid system in township areas. Through his tenacious perseverance, the incredible Maponya Mall in Soweto eventually came into fruition. In 2007, and now holds more than 200 stores, as well as a cinema complex, we will always be grateful to him for his vision to build a state-of-the-art mall, where we also had the privilege of opening our only hypermarket in the township. The Ackerman family group, executive, and our staff would like to convey our sincere condolences to the Maponya family during th this difficult time. Thank you. Thank you to the grandchildren.
Before I turn over to, to Lare Bopape to do the vote of thanks on behalf of the family, I'll just make a couple of announcements. The first annon announcement is the family will leave first. The family will leave through this exit. There's a guard of honor that will meet the family as it exits to the left. So the family will come out first. So with respect, let's allow the family to leave first. Second one is um, the Soweto Memorial is on Monday. There's a memorial on, 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 on there's a Soweto Memorial on Monday at Maponya Mall from nine o'clock to 11 o'clock. You should already know the funeral is then on the 14th on Tuesday at the University of Johannesburg from eight o'clock in the morning. There will be no prayer services today at the house, but there'll be prayer services tomorrow and the day after. Please do not park at the house because the shuttles from Hyde Park to get you, uh, to, get you to, the, to that place. As you leave the place today on the left and on the right hand side, you've got condolences books, condolences books, this language is so difficult. Uh, uh, condolences books, so just uh, please uh, express yourself there. And for those who want to see themselves on video, you can also video your message. Um, finally, uh, those who want to leave flowers as well, bring them to the stage, you have brought flowers. And on Sunday at 8.30, SABC2 will be broadcasting a special uh, interview with uh, Dr. Richard Mapunya on his life and his legacy and his, and his lessons. As we close today, we perhaps should be reminded by the sonnet by John Donne when he said, Death, be not proud. Though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. For those whom thinkest Thou dost overthrow, die not, poor death. Nor yet cast thou kill me. From rest and sleep, which by thy pictures be, much pleasure, then from thee much more must flow. And soonest our best men will go, will thee to do go. Rest of their bones and soul's delivery. Thou art slave to fate, chance, kings, and desperate men. And dost with poison, war and sickness well, and poppy of charms that can make us sleep as well, and better than, and better than thy stroke, why swelled thou then? One short sleep past, we wake up eternally, and death shall be no more. Death, thou shalt die. May I please ask Tulare to come to close and this, once Tulari has uh, done his vote of thanks, I would like Nokukanya Tlamini to close with the song. My name is Tebe Galafeng, and thank you very much for your attention. Erike Tomekaro Lebo Amodim. Ibile Kere. Mokapo Morolo Wile, Dinonyana Jalla Machacha, Vialle Egerialo, Gerata or Riker, Grumilo Kevalapa, Valapa Varigele Levore, Helile Lavateca, Barutivar Tekile Gaditapelo, Baba Mover Tekile Gadiko Shamo, Jack Jackerek. Rata o leva kuru kuru, koreska ba ka amapunya fela. Loko o mo ko tarile se siviali le le tare le ba humoche. Tibule di kamo ka. Agi nya ko 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 vole la kauti kauti. Tibule di kamo ka le re rutile se siwe re le ba lapa re topa topi re fita gai. Rotomaro, go check our na, give sufficient snag our resus to Michega Bela. Vial Gaurial, Usara Marap, Raulevora, Usibishemudiro, Gabo Quarry, and Gerata or Regere, Reke Fejagere. Come on, Caralina, the Nava Coneo Tamo, Reale Levo. He will a soirello. Go to our mapo, Razavari Babang by the Baba Mogalabra 
rata gore go pela tshwarelo le gatong la lapa di o pedi re lebogile ke rata o fetsa ka gore ke tsopole a einstein a re try not to become a man of success but rather to become a man of value ke mo khala jo re thakaneng ka yena e home is a man of value ke a lebo Dimamele, DTP. 